So believe it or not, Decision 2022 still isn't over. You're looking live at Atlanta right now, where polls are still open in the runoff for the U.S. Senate seat there in Georgia. You can see it's been a rainy, pretty miserable election day across a whole lot of Georgia. Some people were out, though, even before the sun came up, standing in the rain in order to cast a ballot this morning. Incumbent Democrat Raphael Warnock faces a challenge from Republican Herschel Walker. There's already been record early voting in the race. Right now, you can see Democrats have a 50 to 49 advantage in the U.S. Senate. The vice president breaks the tie, so no matter what, Chuck Schumer will remain majority leader. And that led to a pretty good question that we got from one of our viewers who messaged us saying, the news keeps talking about the Georgia Senate race, but why does it matter, especially in New York, what happens if Democrats already get to keep control? So joining us live right now to help us better understand this is Jerry Zrimsky. He is the former D.C. bureau chief for the Buffalo News, still covers our nation's capital as a contributor to the paper and also a lecturer at the University of Maryland. Jerry, we always appreciate your time, and I think a lot of people just assume that if you have control of the Senate, it doesn't really matter the margin, but it turns out it, it could matter a lot, um, whether you're a Republican watching us or a Democrat watching us um, or an independent, somebody right in the middle. Um, it, it really does make a difference. What are the keys as you're kind of following this? Well, as I see it, the, the main difference is that having a clear majority, a clear 51 to 49 majority, would give the Democrats the ability to have the majority on every Senate committee. Right now, the committees are split 50-50 because the Senate's split 50-50. And what that does is it gives the Republicans opportunities to really stop things in committee if they really want to, in many cases. Uh, they can also just kind of gum up the works, for example, on judicial nominations. And there are 75 or so vacant judicial slots across the country right now. and. If the Republicans had a tie in the Senate, uh, getting replacement judges for those in the, for those vacancies would just go much more slowly. That would mean the entire Senate, which already operates slowly, would oper operate more slowly still. So that's one factor. The other is that so much in the last two years in the Senate has depended on Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia, the most conservative Democrat. With a genuine majority, 51 to 49, Joe Manchin's vote isn't quite as important as it was when he could basically destroy the Democratic dreams whenever he so chose. So those are two really big factors, and there are others as well. I would also just mention that the demographic of U.S. senators skews older. That's an understatement. <laughs> and so really, the Democrats, if it's a 50-50 Senate, they're one untimely death away from losing their majority. So there are really a lot of reasons here why there's a lot of interest in this Georgia race all through the country and not just in Georgia. Yeah, and Jerry, I've heard a lot made about subpoena power as well. We know that Republicans are gonna have that um, in the House now that Republicans control the House. Um, why is it that Democrats need 51 votes in order to get subpoena power in the Senate? I mean, does it go back to this idea about you know, committees and if you, you need to actually have a majority as opposed to a tie? And I wonder, have there been investigations that just didn't happen in the Senate because they only had the 50 votes for the past two years? Yeah, that's an interesting point. And it is absolutely true that with the Judiciary Committee, for example, stuck at 50-50 or any other committee that chose to do an investigation, there wouldn't be the majority to seek the subpoena. With the majority, there, there certainly is that opportunity. And so that really will give the Democrats that sort of opportunity if they do want to do investigations in the Senate. They may want to, uh, for example, uh, just speaking hypothetically, uh, continue the investigation that the House has begun on, into January 6th. The House committee is going to file a report by the end of the year, but that's going to be it for that investigation. If there's more ground to be covered, it's conceivable that that could be covered in a Senate investigation. Finally, Jerry, I've got about a minute left. Um, people are always looking to the next election. It can kind of drive you crazy, right? We just got done with this one, but it's apparently going to be a difficult one for Democrats in a couple of years. They have a lot more seats that they have to defend in 2024. And so I guess both sides in Georgia are looking at this because it really kind of will determine what the math looks like and who gets to control it next time around. Yeah, that's very much so. If if uh, Raphael Warnock wins tonight, it 
increases the chances that the Democrats will be able to continue to hold the Senate in 2024. You're correct. They face a very, very difficult map where a lot of their incumbents in uh, purple or even red states are going to be up for uh, re-election, including Joe Manchin, including John Tester from Montana. And so if they get one more seat tonight, they're going to feel a lot better going into that very challenging election cycle. And as the polls close, of course, we'll have coverage uh, on our website and more tonight on NBC Nightly News. Uh, Jerry Zermski is a longtime reporter in our nation's capital, previously a uh, bureau chief for the Buffalo News, now a contributor and lecturer at the University of Maryland. Jerry, always great to see you. Thank you. Great seeing you too, Michael.